Hey everyone, I just wanted to play a video clip of uh, one of my favorite Christian apologists, John Lennox. He's an awesome uh, apologist if anybody is ever interested in uh, listening to him. I highly recommend him. In this clip, he's talking about uh, AI, artificial intelligence, okay? And if anybody can go find this clip on YouTube, it's John Lennox, Should We Fear Artificial Intelligence? He just gave this lecture a couple days ago, and uh, I watched it, and I just had to do a little short video over it, because I think what he's talking about is awesome. And he goes into great detail about explaining how the Lord created consciousness and how the the world and Satan is trying to mimic it, okay? How the world's trying to mimic consciousness because they can't create that, okay? With these uh, android artificial intelligence... Um, I watched a movie with my wife the other day uh, called Chappie, and it was about this very subject, about a robot that had consciousness and feelings, and just like a human being stuck inside of a robot body, it was crazy. Uh, but it was, at the same time, really disturbing. Uh, how Satan mimics everything the Lord does and how the world the atheists go about trying to create consciousness or trans transfer it okay I've gotten into conversations with atheists lately uh about the Lord and apologetics, but I'm just going to play this video real quick. I just want everybody to listen to it. Uh, here we go. Barrier in constructing a super intelligence. The biggest hurdle is consciousness because no one, no one has any idea what consciousness is. But there's something more. You see, I said that self-driving cars don't have a conscience. So some sort of morality has to be built in. That's the morality of the programmers. So self-driving cars separate intelligence and conscience. AI separates them. But God links them. Because in the Genesis account... We have a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Please, it's not the tree of knowledge. God didn't want to keep people from knowledge. There was loads of it in the garden. This kind of knowledge is a knowledge you don't want to have. And the analysis in Genesis is something that is way beyond any capacity or beginnings of a capacity of an AI system. Because here... God explains to us what it means to be a moral being. In simple terms, they had freedom to eat of all the trees. God said, don't eat of that one. They had freedom to eat, otherwise the prohibition would have been meaningless. And of course, we know the story that they disobeyed God. The first morality was vertical. It was determined by God. Now, this is a huge problem. If you reject God and you're building all kinds of systems that interact with human beings, what morality are you going to build into them? Where are you going? Exactly. If anybody studied apologetics and argued with the atheist before, the atheist has no absolute objective standard by which they draw their morals from. Uh, atheists at best can only have a subjective morality based upon their opinion and their arbitrary opinion that's it so a hardcore atheist that is consistent okay 
If, to be consistent to their worldview, they cannot say that torturing a child for fun is wrong. They cannot, if they're being consistent, they can't say that that's wrong because in their worldview, their morality is subjective. Okay, what's wrong for you may not be wrong for me, and I can't really tell you you're wrong because it's only my opinion, okay? But see, what we see every day, brothers and sisters, is atheists and their morality. They always claim there is no God, okay? Then they hide behind the false definition of atheism, which is, oh, I don't, uh, I lack belief that there is a God. That's a whole nother rabbit trail, trail but the, and hardcore atheist that, to be consistent, they could not say that anything is absolutely wrong. They could only have opinion. But er, what we see every day is atheists uh, act, acting okay, um, according to how they were made in the image of God. I'm sure most atheists, if they seen a child getting abused, they would say, hey, stop that, what are you doing, that's wrong. But then they would be inconsistent with their worldview because their morals is not based upon God, the absolute standard. Their morals are based upon a subjective standard that's by their own opinion. They couldn't tell that person that's abusing that child, hey, you're absolutely wrong for what you're doing. That is evil, that's wrong what you're doing. They could only say, it's my opinion that what you're doing is not right. Okay, but they couldn't really tell that person at the end of the day that what they're doing is wrong. Okay, only we only you can only get true subject. Uh, sorry, you can only get true objective, absolute morals from God. That's that's where they come from. That's where our morality comes from. Okay, you can't get morality from an AI system. Anyways, they get it from because if there isn't a God. I would want to argue that morality ends up being essentially subjective. Now that's another huge topic. But it's important that we see again what Genesis says because this creature that God built in his image grasped at autonomy and brought sin and disaster into the world. Do you know what many people in the robotics world and AI world fear? Exactly the same thing happening to their creations. And interestingly enough, a leading scientist draws the parallel and, and she says, if we see the Genesis account of the fall as foreshadowing of fears about robots, then Genesis gets the problem exactly right for exactly the right reasons. It's a worry about autonomy itself. What might robots do if we can't control them fully? And there, of course, she's thinking of robots with AI systems together. We can thank, she says, the Hebrew account of Genesis for pre-warning us about this danger thousands of years ago. So there has been a conference of some of the world's leading thinkers to try and get people to agree to impose morality on any of these developments lest something gets out of control one of the leading researchers in the world on artificial intelligence is a christian believer at mit her name is rosalind picard and she uses ai systems to to the inner heart of autistic children and she's done wonderful work in helping those children. And she writes a general point, the greater the freedom of a machine, the more it will need moral standards. So Genesis raises the morality question. There is concern about it, even when talking about hypothetical super intelligent machines. But there was another tree in the garden, and that is the tree of life. And we remember that one of Harari's propositions was that in this century, we are going to solve the problem of physical death, are we? Because Genesis raises some very interesting points. It tells us that when humans disobeyed God,
He removed from them a source of food that if they had had access to it would have kept them physically alive forever. That's what the text says. And you begin to wonder if the search for physical immortality all goes back to this story that God excluded them from it and you've probably read in classical mythology the search for the elixir of life and now the modern version is the search for homo deus so Harari projects into the future and his idea is that we're going to upgrade humans into gods the biblical answer to it is spectacular because there is a homo deus a man who is God but you see the atheist the world Satan all right they're trying to make man into God, okay? But when we tell them that God already came in flesh, Jesus Christ, they laugh in our face. Uh, John Lennox is about to basically say that, okay? The whole Antichrist world system is totally backwards against Christ, okay? The homo deus, what he was talking about. Jesus coming again, they're trying to achieve immortality. They're trying to find a way around death other than Jesus Christ. They're trying to download their consciousness into robots. Okay, they're trying to find a way to do that, to, to defeat death, to not die. Okay, they're trying to go around the door the way, the truth, the life, Jesus Christ. It's not man becoming God. It's God becoming man. And the heart of the Christian faith is that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Evidenced by his resurrection and his ascension, there is a homo deus. We don't have to wait for Harari or Kurzweil or anybody else to create a man who is God. There is a man who is God. Now, isn't it interesting, ladies and gentlemen, that when someone like Harari or Kearse says, this is going to happen, people say, oh, that's fascinating. But when we claim that there is a man who is God, oh, they say, you couldn't possibly believe that. That's the Bible, isn't it? And what I want to argue to you tonight seriously is this. We have come to a very important moment where we can see in our culture ideas that are parodies of what we've already got in the Bible, which gives us a remarkable opportunity to speak into what's going on. Now, one of the hopes of these people, you've probably heard it, is to upgrade ourselves and become more intelligent and all this kind of thing. But you see, there is already in existence a divine upgrade. And phase one is that any one of us, by trusting Christ as Lord and Savior, who died for our sins, can become what we were not by nature, Amen. a child of God. That is a spectacular divine upgrade, isn't it? Amen. And that can already happen. We don't have to wait for it. We can receive the life of God. And perhaps by looking at it against the background of AI, we can see just how remarkable this is. We have something to say to our world. They're searching for it. They're nowhere near it. They're trying to get there. But we can say, look, God has become man. There is a man who is God. Amen. He has risen from the dead. Amen. And he invites everybody to become children of God, receiving a new life, eternal life, by trusting him. To as many as received him, he gave the right to become children of God. The serpent said, in the day you eat thereof, you shall be homo deus. You shall be as gods. Here's the biblical answer to that. God doesn't want to suppress anybody. 
He wants to make us his children in his family with the same kind of life as he has got. But there's more. The Homo Deus was here. He's left. He's returning. And publicly to his judges, Jesus said, You shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of God and coming on the clouds of heaven. Privately to his disciples, he said, This same, it was said to his disciples, This same Jesus shall so come as you saw him go. Homo Deus is going to return. Amen. Now let's listen to a famous atheist, John Gray, who's always worth reading. Humans may well use science to turn themselves into something like gods, as they have imagined them to be. But no supreme being will appear in the scene. Instead, there will be many different gods, each of them a parody of human beings that once existed. He's wrong. I will come again. And I will take you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. Amen. So how far have we got? The AGI people are speculating on the creation of hum Homo Deus by human engineering and intellectual ability. Scripture claims that a superintelligence has always existed, God, and God has become human, and there is a homo deus. Jesus, the God-man, the word become flesh, but there's more. And now it becomes even more fascinating, because the Bible talks of a future homo deus that is evil. This is Paul writing in the first century to a church at Thessalonica. Listen to what he has to say. And bear in mind when I read it that he was only in this city for three weeks. And he reminded the people that when he was there, he told them this stuff. What had he told them? For that day will not come. That is the day of judgment will not come until the rebellion comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed the son of destruction who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God proclaiming himself to be God and then all right brothers and sisters I'm gonna end this video but I just wanted to show everybody this clip of John Lennox and his uh, seminar his discussion uh, this was very recent a few days ago okay uh, I hope this blesses somebody I thought it was pretty neat um, I'm gonna try to make some more videos pretty soon but uh, I hope everybody's doing great and uh, I'm gonna end this video and God bless everybody thank you guys